So uh, Randy Gordon here at the Jazz Heritage Center's um, Media and Education Screening Room, March 31st, the end of the first quarter as it were, and we just showed the film uh, Simply Raw with associate producer Michael Bedar. And I just wanted to ask you, Michael, um, thank you for screening the film here. Pleasure. Where do we, uh, where do you go from here? What, where, where can you take mm -hmm. the film and like what's next? Yeah, now that the film is out, it's a great time to ask what's next. And I'm starting to feel like I'm defining myself and loving being a community wellness organizer with the great vehicle of a film, Simply Raw Reversing Diabetes in 30 Days, as um, a, a vessel that participants in the community can step into, really have a transformative participatory experience. I'm really getting to asking people to, to participate fully in the film, be more than a passive viewer, but really put themselves into it. And in that way then, I'm also trained as a life food nutrition instructor and a group facilitator with many, many people who've gone through this process. So, and the communities are wonderful. I think there's an untapped potential. Right. We, we, see, we saw it tonight, and at every screening I go to, there's people willing to go to lengths, put energy, time, and money into, into sharing this word with people. Saw, right. saw it in a big way tonight. Mm -hmm. And so, forming little groups right. of committed people, like, like, uh, like Margaret Mead said, if I get the quote right, she said, um, never doubt that a small group of committed people can, uh, can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And that was true in making the film, right. and it's true in being a community wellness organization, a community, an alliance, and a movement um, with the film. So that's the way my filmmaking life has always been since 1999. It was more of an interest, something that was uplifting the community, that then a film knocked on my head and said, get made, so right. it could have an effect. So same now, and I think the post-film effect is the most significant in this film of anyone I've been a part of because there's such uh, um, acute and timely need and response happening to this. You've got a lot of uh, celebrity support. Um, they do obviously, drop people. Yeah. A, a, that are actually in the film and people from Tony Robbins to Woody Harrelson to Morgan Spurlock and the Reverend Michael uh, Beckwith. Mm -hmm. um, and do you see getting, you know, when Michelle Obama just won the uh, Big Help Award on Nick Kidd's Choice and mm -hmm. she has her Let's Move campaign. Do you see a groundswell happening with more celebrities in the Hollywood community uh, maybe engaging in this film as well? Well, groundswell would be the word. I mean, I've seen um, beyond who's in the film, as you said, and there's some talk amongst us um, <laughs> in the film that Michelle Obama might have already seen Simply Raw, and that helped inspire her to create the Let's Move campaign. That, that's some um, uh, just hopeful rumors amongst us. <laughs> um, whether or not that's true, um, we're seeing the celebrity response. Um, recently, John Sally, who won the NBA championship four times, um, became a, um, a speaker at an event that drew a lot of people, and he's fully be behind this film. I'm kind of wondering about the, uh, how realistic it is to maintain the diet on, say, like a low income. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the thing that's always sort of worried me is that, you know, it seems like there's just not enough access to good food for people who are on close to minimum wage or just barely scraping by and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions about that? I do. I do. I feel that um, we can make up for what we may be lacking in income at the time being through um, kind of intimacy and getting to know your food and spending mm -hmm. a little bit of time with it. And what I mean by that in particular is one practical tip is what sprouting enables us to do. When we can um, get a, a bag of mung beans, probably probably a, a liter of, of mung beans, for, for $3, um, and then sprout them um, a few milligrams at a time, uh, and we get a whole jar full for each, each set, um, and we have a great sort of sprout syrup of almost any kind are excellent sources of vitamins, minerals, especially if there's salt water, uh, uh, sea salt water in the sprouting water. Mm -hmm. um, you know, good sources of protein and complex carbohydrates. So these are hearty meals when mixed with a little bit of uh, your favorite um, oil and a little bit of herbs and spices. 
you get a great meal with a very low cost for the sprouts as a bulk item. Um, and then you know you're growing it too, you know it's organic, so you're getting things that even you can spend a lot of money on, things that I still not have something that you have that relationship with. Hmm. Well, that's one practical tip. Um, yeah, just getting used to having a, a kitchen system, uh, especially a refrigerator system, where you know when you're in a pinch, you, you eat out, and that's when that's when things start to cost money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so having this system in our refrigerator where we we know what proportions we want to have the big fridge have greens and seeds and nuts, buy them in bulk when you can. Go to your farmer's market when you can each week. Have fresh and affordable. Um, yeah, learn how to learn how to package into the right containers to take with you. So again, you're not out. And you're looking for something to eat. You know, if you package what you know you're going to want, and that's just takes some self knowledge and a little experimentation. It's a fun process. You get to know what you want. You put it in your little Tupperware. You've got a good mix for yourself. Yeah. So, Michael, um, I also wanted to ask you what's coming up in the month of April, because I know the 40th an annual uh, Earth Day is upon us, and I know that you're going to be speaking. Uh, downtown, I believe, at the Federal Building in San Francisco, but tell me more about that. I'm pretty excited about this opportunity to reach what I understand to be the heads of the federal agencies in the Western region, our headquarters at the San Francisco Federal Building. So I received an invitation from uh, GSA, meaning the General Services Administration, to be the keynote speaker at the um, 40th anniversary of Earth Day celebration at the GSA on April 15th. So while everyone's turning in their taxes, we're going to be celebrating Earth Day a little bit early at the Federal Building. So my topic is reversing diabetes, sustainable farming, and how healing the planet is in healing diabetes and, and um, sustainable agriculture. So it's Earth Day. We're celebrating that we are beings living on a planet that we're basically one with. Our, our fortunes are intertwined together. And what occurred to me in making this film uh, and that I think it's starting to catch on that as a demand to heal our bodies from living against the grain of wisdom comes, so with that comes healing the planet. So as now we know from the UN that agriculture is the primary reason for water pollution, uh, genetic pollution, and uh, carbon uh, gases. So, as, as well as greenhouse gases that are even more powerful, like nitrogen gases. So, when we start healing um, the way we eat, we're going to affect the demand and therefore really affect the farmland and have a whole um, rising up together of our health and the planet's health.